After Derek resigned, every night, he would wear a new suit and wander around the city to see what would kill him first. Whether it was cancer or a sudden madman, once exhausted or bored, he will take a taxi home. Derek was walking quickly when he saw Chris Brunette drinking beer while taking medication. Chris laughs loudly with a scantily clad cigarette-smoking teenage girl until they get into a car. At this moment, Derek wanted to spit blood. How could he possibly forget that little bastard? That his cancer had screwed up his brain so badly that he was willing to let the bastard slip away with ease. The tires screeched harshly as the car started suddenly, almost hitting a girl who was crossing the road. hear the laughter of the idiots. He gritted his teeth and began planning his final action. Firstly, he searched Chris on all social networks to learn about his daily habits and then, Derek installed a GPS tracker under the Camaro car to keep track of his exact location at all times. When tracking him, Derek took many photos of Chris abusing alcohol and drugs, but Derek did not intend to submit the evidence to the police. What can he get from it? Chris will only be slapped again. Derek has no extra time and is unwilling to do what the so-called judicial process should do. Soon after, Derek learns that the bastard will be attending a carnival. Derek double-checks the equipment, then gets into the best car he's ever used to hunt monsters, a black 1967 Chevrolet Impala. Derek followed Chris Chris closely, and as soon as he was clear of the traffic camera, he sideswiped Chris's car, forcing Chris to stop. Chris had just stepped out of the car when Derek tasered him to the ground. Derek crushed every electronic device he could find. Bitcoins, smartphones, GPS trackers, even Chris's keychain. Derek tied Chris's hands and feet and threw him in the trunk of the car, heading for a carnival just for the two of them. Derek drove to an abandoned warehouse in an old industrial area. He replaced the original box of chains. Inside the warehouse were two chairs surrounded by a bucket and several water tanks. Derek opens the boot of the car and finds that Chris has regained his senses, so he tases him again and ties him to a chair. Derek then throws a bucket of water on Chris to force him to regain his focus. Hello, Chris. My name is Derek Esposito and you killed my brother. We need to talk. Chris tries to break free and Derek piles him in the groin with a steel pipe. The pain paralyzes him. The last time we met was during your farce of a trial. Do you remember me? Good. Let's get right down to business. Derek pulled two digital timers out of the car and set the first to 30 minutes and the second to two hours, 44 minutes and 16 seconds. He then pulled out a gun and shot Chris twice towards his liver. Chris's screams were muffled by the gag board, but the shots rang out in the empty warehouse. Derek started two timers simultaneously. Now before the real pain comes, I need you to take a good look at the timers. They're important. Now, your only task is to stay awake and savor every moment of pain, as Carl did. Derek stopped talking to him. He just paced back and forth. And when the second timer went off, Derek finally spoke again. I have bad news and good news. The bad news is that your liver shattered on this. And the good news is that you just suffered for a long time like Carl did. Now your suffering is over. Derek shot Chris twice in the head. Then he pointed the gun at his own head. Brother, I'm coming. Wait for me. And pulled the trigger one last time. Derek's body was falling but his consciousness was bathed in light, and he felt himself being pulled towards the sky. He's never felt so relaxed. All of his negativity had returned. Derek cursed in his mind as he let his eyes focus. I survived, some idiot must have saved me, but I still have cancer. But when his eyes finally cleared, they vehemently opposed his reasoning. Derek was in some sort of giant metal corridor, surrounded by bodies, alien corpses to be exact. Where am I? What the hell does that mean? And that's when he noticed that he was also wearing a spacesuit and that he had four arms with three fingers on each hand. What the hell does that mean? What, what, what's going on? This alien is screaming in panic because he is none other than Derek after his rebirth. After panicking, Derek gradually calmed down and began to analyze the current predicament. The first thing he noticed was the burns all over his spacesuit, which should have been attacked by some powerful weapon surrounded by alien bodies and purple jelly. That meant the purple jelly was coagulated alien blood. This makes no sense. All the evidence points to the fact that this body was dead as Julius Caesar until I somehow happened to inhabit it. And for whatever reason, it's also fully healed. Oh man, this means all religions are dead wrong. Luckily I never believed in any mumbo jumbo. He then discovers that he still speaks English, even though he's turned into an alien monster, and that it's a war between two factions. He couldn't yet stand up with this body to the point where he had to get up against the wall and start exploring. He tries to open the door, but he doesn't know anything about alien culture or technology, and exhaustion and hunger drive him to despair until he falls asleep from sheer exhaustion. Waking up with a clear mind again, Derek was getting weaker and weaker, so he made noise at every door he came across to try and get attention. As he was about to pass out again. Captain, that's Zerk, he's alive. What are you doing on the floor, soldier? And how in Thrax's name did you survive that ambush? Dude, I have no idea what you did just said. What is he rambling? Medic, 
Any reading on that blaster wound? No, sir. It's not an Imperial diamond. Scanners confirmed the holes in his armor must have been caused by a Coraline explosive energy gun, but I don't know how he survived. It's a liability. Looks like I'm gonna die again. Lucky me. Oh, listen up, soldiers. Derek was a good soldier and we were remembering more than was such. It took Derek less than a minute to die, but for him, it seemed to last forever. Once again, he found himself basked by blinding light and pulled towards it. Derek had never believed in any god. He doesn't believe in heaven and hell either. Humankind has always been a terrible race, he thought. There is no pure good or evil in human nature. So I think either everyone has an afterlife or none of them do. Instead, I got this cheap excuse of reincarnation screwing with me. What purpose being reborn could possibly have if I retain all of my memories? No matter what species or planet I end up on, I'll still be carrying my baggage. So once I step out into the light, all my pain, anger, and disdain for humanity will prevent me from learning whatever lessons I'm supposed to be learning. Suddenly, he was pulled downwards and away from the light. His vision was a blur, but he could still hear a lot of commotion around him. When Derek was finally able to see, he realized that he had been turned into a baby and was being held by an old hag, surrounded by people in rags and dressed in what looked like medieval. He is alive. I did it. I managed to save your boy's <laughs> life. A man laughs. Man, I hate being always right. He is alive. I did. I managed to save your boy's life. After the midwife said this, everyone around the wooden house hugged and cheered together. Meanwhile, Derek lied limp in the midwife's arms, looking left and right trying to determine how bad was his current situation. On lying in bed was supposed to be my mother, and I bet I still have my brother and sister. It should be my father who is crying. Suddenly, another woman entered the bedroom, bringing with her a little boy and a girl that raced to the bedridden woman. The was worse than I thought, and I had to fight with them to survive with guns. Nana, what's wrong with the baby? Why is he not crying? It never happened before. When Nanan first took over the baby, Derek peed on her. Derek started giggling loudly. Said this child is normal. Don't move, Elena. I still have to cure you. Another midwife used magic, and the black energy swirled around Nanan to clear the smell of urine. Derek was so shocked that his mouth opened wide. Derek opened his mouth wide in shock and watched as his excrement dried up, crumbled, and turned to dust. Like if something deep inside of him had started taking root and suddenly had become ingrained in the very fabric of his new reality. Let me stop the bleeding for you, my dear. Then Nana walked to Elena, and Nana's hand emitted light, and the light converged into a ball of light, healing Elena. Derek was engrossed, carefully observing every movement. Derek's heart changed again. After dark magic, he established a connection with light magic. His reasoning was abruptly interrupted. The woman that had held him until that moment was handing him to his mother. Nana, are you sure he is all right? I'm really afraid something will happen to him. After saying these words, the noisy room became gloomy. To lighten the atmosphere, Derek made a baby crying sound. Nana felt her professional pride hurt by such allegations. She knew Elena since she was still a child. She delivered all of Elena's children. It was the most difficult midwifery in Nana's career. Labor lasted several hours. Irina gave birth with all her might, but the baby was strangled by the umbilical cord and was dying. Nana quickly put the baby under the healing lamp. The baby gradually <laughs> regained her breath before Nana relaxed. Nana walked up to Elena and stroked her cheek and put the child in Elena's arms. Nana's hand emitted a beam of light that surrounded the baby in the cradle. This energy gave him a lot of power, but this power was about to disappear. Derek recalls memories of his past life, when he got his degree, when he finally left his parents' house, when he hit those bullies. No! Come back to me! Give me my power back! The rest too. Derek's light stopped dimming and instead grew stronger and stronger. Grandma was stunned by this scene, but Derek's magic ran out and he fell asleep, sleeping in his mother's arms. My child, I think the newborn may be blessed by the light. There is no need to worry, only to rejoice.